Hello everyone, this is Miss Lindsay. Today we're going to talk about section 5.1 and direct proof. The method for proving a statement using an indirect proof is that you take the prove statement and you assume the opposite or the negation of that. Okay. Then you will use your givens, using logical reasons, to contradict one of your known facts. And again, this is usually one of your given statements. Hence, um, if you can prove a contradiction, your assumption would then be false. Therefore, your proof statement would be true. Let's take an example of one of these. This one is actually already worked out for you. So you're given angle one and angle two are not congruent. You're trying to prove that angle one and two are not vertical angles. So we take the prove statement, not the given, the prove statement, and we're going to assume the opposite of it. So we're going to assume angle one and angle two are vertical angles. And the reason would be assumption to begin an indirect proof. From that, we can get angle one is congruent to angle two. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. However, our given statement says that angle one and two are not congruent. Therefore, two and three these steps form a contradiction, definition of a contradiction. Because we proved a contradiction, what we assumed in step one, what we assumed must not be true. Therefore, angle one and two are not vertical angles. And this comes from if an assumption leads to a contradiction. If an assumption leads to a contradiction, then the assumption must be false. Okay, so again, we assume the opposite or the negation of our proof statement, go through our reasonings to prove a contradiction by definition of contradiction. Therefore, our assumption led to a contradiction. Therefore, what we assumed must be false. Let's go ahead and try our first example. Given angle H is not congruent to angle K, we're trying to prove that segment JH is not congruent to segment JK. So let's go ahead and start our proof. And we're going to assume the opposite of our prove statement. We're going to assume that JH is congruent to JK. Assumption to begin and indirect proof. Therefore, we have JH is congruent to JK. Therefore, we can prove that angle H is congruent to angle J. If the legs of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. However, from our given statement, we know that angle H is not congruent to angle K. This is our contradiction. Step two and three lead us to a contradiction. So two and three are contradictions. Definition of contradiction. So what we assumed must be false. So JH is not congruent to JK. And this comes from step one, if an assumption leads to a contradiction, then the assumption is false. So 
again, we assume the prove statement, key that that's the prove statement, not anything from the givens. We assume the opposite, the negation of it, assumption to begin an indirect proof. We proved a contradiction, therefore our assumption must be false. Let's go ahead and move on to the next example. Here we have P is not the midpoint of HK. HJ is not congruent to JK. We're trying to prove that ray JP does not bisect angle HJK. So we will start with our assumption for an indirect proof. We're going to take our proof statement. We will assume JP bisects angle H, J, K. Assumption to begin and indirect proof. Therefore, this would show that, let me go ahead and mark that as angle one and angle two, therefore angle one would be congruent to angle two if a ray bisects an angle then it divides the angle into two congruent angles. We also know that HJ is congruent to JK, given. Let's go ahead and mark that on our diagram. And then take a look here. We have a side, we have an angle, so if we follow that along, we can prove that JP is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. which would lead us to proving that triangle HJP is congruent to triangle KJP by side, angle, side. Our side would be three, angle would be step two, and then our reflexive side, which is four. We take a look at our given statement though the negation here so in other words P is not the midpoint of HJ however if we prove these two triangles congruent by CPCTC we can then show a contradiction that HP is congruent to PK therefore P is the midpoint so that would lead us to a contradiction so let's go ahead and finish writing that up so HP congruent to PK, CPCTC, is the midpoint of HK, if a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, However, we know P is not the midpoint of HK, which is given. So now we have a contradiction. So this is our contradiction. So step seven and eight. Prediction, definition of contradiction. Therefore, what we assumed in the beginning 
which is the negation of our proof statement. We assume that JP bisects angle HJK. That is no longer true. So ray JP does not bisect angle HJK. If an assumption leads to a contradiction, then the assumption is false. On this third example, here we are showing, we have our given, we have circle O, H E is not the perpendicular bisector of segment D F. We are trying to prove that segment D E is not congruent to segment E F. I'd like you to go ahead and finish this proof and have this ready for class tomorrow. And this concludes section 5.1 notes.